Welcome to a deep dive, folks, a deep dive into super intelligence. You know, you all sent in some really interesting stuff on this, articles, research, even a sci-fi novel or two. Some light reading to get us in the mood for super intelligence. Right? Exactly. And let me tell you, after going through all of it, we are barely scratching the surface here. We really are. We're talking about AI so advanced, it could make our, well, our brains look like... Uh, like old floppy disks. Yeah, basically. It's mind-blowing. Imagine technology that doesn't just help us think, but actually, you know, outthinks us. That's the potential of superintelligence. It's not just about making AI smarter. It's about reaching a level of intelligence that surpasses human capabilities across the board. And the thing is, this isn't just some far-off fantasy. Right. This isn't a movie. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, you know, the folks who created ChatGPT. Yeah, they're kind of a big deal. To say the least. Well, he predicts that this whole superintelligence thing could be a reality within a few thousand days. Thousands, not millions. That's surprisingly soon. Right. So before we all start panicking about a robot takeover, let's hear what Altman actually envisions, because it might surprise you. It's interesting because Altman isn't some doomsayer predicting a dystopian future. Actually, he's quite optimistic about the whole thing. Optimistic about superintelligence. Yeah, he sees a future where superintelligence unlocks incredible productivity and creativity. Okay, so no robot overlords then. Paint me a picture. What does this superintelligence utopia look like? Well, for one, imagine a world of personalized education. Every child learning at their own pace with AI tutors tailoring lessons to their unique needs. And forget about language barriers AI could translate on the fly, opening up a world of knowledge to anyone, anywhere. So no more struggling through high school Spanish. Exactly. And it's not just about making learning easier. One of the studies you sent over showed incredible improvements in student outcomes with AI tutors. Yeah. Wasn't there something about rural schools seeing test scores go way up after using those AI programs? That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's the kind of impact we're looking at. Okay, so education, check. What else? How about a revolution in medicine? Imagine superintelligence helping us diagnose diseases with incredible accuracy, personalizing treatment plans based on your genes, maybe even finding cures for diseases we thought were incurable. So no more waiting weeks for test results or dealing with one-size-fits-all treatment plans. Exactly. Your health managed proactively and precisely, all thanks to superintelligence. Sounds pretty good to me. What about, like, scientific discoveries? Imagine scientists tackling massive problems like climate change with the help of AI. We could see breakthroughs in renewable energy, carbon capture, you name it. Things that normally take decades of research could happen in a fraction of the time. So superintelligence basically turbocharges our efforts to solve the world's biggest problem. Exactly. It's like hitting fast forward on scientific progress. Okay, but hold on a second. This all sounds amazing. Almost too good to be true. But we have to be realistic, right? What about the downsides? What happens when the robots are composing symphonies, but we're all out of work because a machine can flip burgers faster? Well, yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? The potential for job displacement is a real concern. It's not just about robots flipping burgers, is it? No, not even close. We're talking about AI that can analyze financial markets, write legal documents, even code software. Wait, even software development? But those are the jobs, you know, creating the AI. Exactly. It's a bit ironic, isn't it? but it highlights how even highly skilled jobs could be impacted. Okay, now I am starting to get a little worried. So what, no job is safe? I wouldn't say no job is safe. It's not about some, you know, robot uprising where machines take over. It's more about the job market transforming. So less Terminator, more like the job market on a roller coaster. Something like that. Some jobs will disappear, others will change drastically, and new ones will emerge. Okay, that makes sense. But even if there are new jobs, how do we make sure everyone benefits? Won't this just worsen inequality? That's a huge concern. You sent over that article about AI and wealth distribution. The one that predicted a tiny elite controlling all the AI. That's the one. It's a scary thought, right? If access to superintelligence becomes the ultimate luxury, we're in trouble. Yeah, that's not the utopia we were painting earlier. Not at all. We have to be very intentional about making sure the benefits of superintelligence are available to everyone. Okay, so how do we do that? This feels like a massive societal challenge, not just a tech problem. You're absolutely right. It's about rethinking our values, our systems. Education is a big part of it. You mean like teaching kids how to code AI? Well, that's part of it. 
But we also need to focus on skills that AI struggles with, creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, emotional intelligence. So we're talking about a pretty radical shift in how we educate the next generation. Pretty much. We need to prepare them not just for a world with AI, but for a world where AI is doing a lot of the things we used to think only humans could do. Okay, so what about the people already in the workforce? The ones whose jobs might be at risk? That's where things get even more complex. Some people are talking about radical new economic models. Have you heard of universal basic income? You mean like everyone gets a paycheck even if they're not working? Isn't that like a really controversial idea? It's definitely controversial, but it's the kind of thing we need to be discussing. If AI is going to automate a huge chunk of jobs, how do we ensure people are still able to support themselves and thrive? It's a huge question, no doubt. And to be honest, it kind of makes me wonder if we're even ready for this. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Are we ready? The technology is developing so rapidly. So what do we do? Where do we even begin to get our heads around all of this? It feels like we're talking about like changing the world as we know it. We are. That's the thing about superintelligence. It's not just another technological advancement. It has the potential to fundamentally reshape our world. But that means we have a responsibility to guide its development responsibly. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, Give us the plan. What concrete steps can we take to prepare for this superintelligence revolution? Okay, so we've talked about, like, overhauling education and maybe even giving everyone a basic income. But is there anything else? I mean, this is superintelligence we're talking about. It feels like we need some serious safeguards in place. Absolutely. Regulation is key. Think of it this way. You wouldn't build a rocket without, you know, safety protocols and experts making sure it doesn't explode, right? Yeah, that would be bad. Understatement. And super intelligence. Yeah. Way more powerful than a rocket. We need some serious ground rules. So like national security stuff, top secret labs and all that. That's part of it. We need clear rules, ethical guidelines, the whole nine yards. But it can't just be one country going it alone. We need global cooperation on this. Oh, right, like that article about an AI arms race, countries trying to outdo each other. Exactly. That's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. We need to treat superintelligence as a shared challenge, something we tackle together. Okay, but how do we even start? Getting all the countries in the world to agree on something as complex as this, it seems impossible. It's a huge undertaking, no doubt. But it's not unprecedented. Look, we've managed to work together on things like climate change and nuclear weapons. Right, those little issues. Well, they seemed impossible to solve too, right? It starts with dialogue, research, and finding common ground. So basically, we need to approach this whole superintelligence thing with a global perspective. Like, what's good for humanity, not just what's good for one country or company. Exactly. It's about the bigger picture. And we need everyone involved ethicists, policymakers, scientists, even the general public. This isn't something that should be decided by a bunch of tech people in Silicon Valley. It's everyone's future on the line. Mm -hmm. Wow, I have to say this whole conversation has been mind blowing. So any final thoughts? What do you really want our listener to take away from all of this? I think the most important thing is that the future with superintelligence isn't set in stone. It's not some unavoidable destiny. It's what we choose to make it. We have the power to shape how this unfolds. Exactly. If we think proactively about education, the economy, the ethics, well, we can actually steer superintelligence in a direction that benefits everyone. That's a hopeful thought. So to our listeners out there, if superintelligence really is on the horizon, what role do you want it to play in your life? How will you help shape this future? It's something to think about. And on that note, thanks for joining us for this incredible deep dive into the world of superintelligence. Until next time, Keep those questions coming and never stop exploring.